Now we're going to look at titration of a weak acid with a strong base. So we're going to consider titrating 25 milliliters of 0 0.100 molar HCHO2, um, formic acid, I believe, with 0 0.100 molar sodium hydroxide. And so first we're going to look at what volume of sodium hydroxide do we need to reach the equivalence point. What are, how are we going to figure that out? Not a nice table. Not yet. Stoichiometry. It's just stoichiometry. So what we've got here, um, we've got zero. Oh, that's not good. You can't see yellow on white, can you? Try it there. Is that better? Point one zero zero moles per liter of sodium hydroxide, and we've got twenty five milliliters of the acid and its concentration is 0 0.110 moles per liter. And we want to know how many milliliters of sodium hydroxide. That's what the question's asking. So we've done some really kind of complicated calculations, but some of the calculations we do are easy. And so don't try to make everything hard. So what we're going to do here is we're going to start with um, a volume of the acid. I'm just going to call it HA. And we're going to multiply by the concentration. We'll do the millimole thing. This is, that's an M. Millimoles of acid per milliliter. And then we've got one millimole of base, uh, well, sodium hydroxide, per one millimole, that's not a millimole, per one millimole of HA. Most of the stuff we're going to do is one-to-one -one stoichiometry, but it isn't always. And you have to consider the stoichiometry. And then, the units at this point are going to be what? Millimoles of sodium hydroxide. What are we trying to find? Milliliters. Okay. So what we want is milliliters, and we're going to divide by 0 0.100 millimoles. That's the concentration of the sodium hydroxide. So then the millimoles are going to cancel out. And that is going to equal 25 milliliters of sodium hydroxide. And I know some of you could just look at that problem and say, well, it's going to be the same amount. Yeah, the concentrations are the same, and it's a one-to-one -one stoichiometry. But not all the problems you're going to see are going to be this simple, and so that's how you would set it up. This is a good thing to note. The volume uh, at the equivalence point only depends on the amount of acid, the moles of acid. It does not depend on the strength of the acid. This is the same calculation we did for a strong acid. It doesn't matter that it's a weak acid. Because the equivalence point is where you have added uh, the number of moles of base that is equivalent to the moles of acid. That's what the equivalence point is. doesn't matter what kind of an acid or base it is. Okay, so what would the pH be of that solution before we've added any base? Well, this is going to be a little different than the strong acid one because here we have a weak acid. So here's the um, ionization equation for this weak acid. And we're going to make an ice table. Our initial concentration of acid is what is given, 0 0.100 molar. Um, we're going to assume that the initial concentration of acid is essentially zero. It's really 10 to the minus 7, but that's so small it doesn't matter and that our concentration of the conjugate base is zero. This equilibrium is going to go in the forward direction, to the right. And so we're going to lose x from the acid, gain x on the hydronium, and gain x on the um, weak base. And so we end up with these at equivalence. And then what do we do with that? This should be old hat. 
we just use the, the Ka expression. So that's going to be um, x times x, which is x squared, divided by 0 0.100 minus x. Question? Because I made a mistake. It's not. Good catch. So what do we what do we usually do at this point? We solve for x. Do you think x is small here? Yes. Yeah, it probably is. So let's let's go with the x is small approximation. I'll go with the I can't find my calculator approximation. Helps if you try to take the cover off on the correct side. Okay, so we're going to get the square root of 1.8 times 10 to the minus 4 times 0.1. I'm getting 4.2 4 times 10 to the minus 3rd. X equals 4.24 times 10 to the minus 3rd. And that is equal to the hydronium ion concentration. All right, so that's what we're going to use to find the pH. So we'll take the negative base 10 log of that, and I'm going to get 2.37. Any questions? OK, so that's before we've added any base. Well, what, after, what about adding 5 milliliters of sodium hydroxide? New ice table, yes. So these are important. For weak acids, the strong base converts a stoichiometric amount of the acid into its conjugate base, and the solution is now a buffer. Oh. So this is not technically an ice table. This is one of those stoichiometry tables where we're taking and looking at what do we have before. Well, here's the concentration of the acid. Why is, why is this now moles and not molarity? The, the volumes are going to be changing now, right? Yeah, and so it's easier to do this in terms of moles and deal with the volume later if we need a concentration. Remember we did the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation for a lot of these, and when you do that, as long as the volumes of acid and base that they're dissolved in is equal, which they are, the volume cancels itself out. And so we can just leave it out. So what they've done here is they've taken the volume and the concentration, and they found the number of moles of acid, and water doesn't come into play because it's a liquid, and here are the moles of the conjugate base, and hydroxide, we're saying, is essentially zero. Then we're adding 0 0.0005 moles of sodium hydroxide. That's five milliliters of 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide. So we're looking at the number of moles that are added. And then we're going to assume that this reacts completely. So then this goes back to being zero. And this is going to use up 0 0.0005 of the weak acid and create 0 0.0005 of the weak, conjugate weak base. OK? It is confusing, isn't it? It, the, you know, these calculations are one of those things that you really just have to either get really clear in your head, which I'm not the best at, or you got to write them down. Yeah. I went around in circles a couple times on a later example here because people were talking to me about other things, and it was confusing. So we're, we're looking at this, and we're saying we're adding this much sodium hydroxide. See, this is an arrow. It's not an equilibrium arrow. It's a single direction arrow. We're saying this is going to react completely. So we're thinking about stoichiometry here. So this is going to react with that. Well, it's one to one. We could do a whole calculation and show what happens there, but I think we're past that. 
So all of this is going to react because this is a smaller amount in terms of moles than this is. So I'm taking this and I'm subtracting it from this and that's how I end up with how many moles of acid are left. The 0 0.0005 moles of this, well let's just call it 0.5 millimoles, 0.5 millimoles of this reacts with 0.5 millimoles of that and makes 0.5 millimoles of this. And then what we have left here is 2 millimoles of the acid. Now, could we calculate the pH? Yeah, we could. Well, how about we just use Henderson Hasselbach? Can we do that? I should have written down what the pK, pKa of this acid is. Is that in the example? In the well, but we don't know what the Ka is. I mean, it could be looked up, but I don't have it on the slide. Can I borrow your book? Yeah. As I just, I, I forgot to write that down. I don't know. Did we? Thank you. Okay. So I did put it on there. Oh. So 1.8 times 10 to the minus 4. So pK is 3.74. So then what we should be able to do here is say that the pH is equal to the pKa, which is 3.74, plus the log of the base over the acid. So the base is this, so that's 0 0.000500, divided by the acid. So we've got 3.74 plus base. So we end up with a pH of 3.14. Any questions? And the pKa pKa relationship is the negative log of Ka is pKa? Yeah, P, pKa is found the same way from Ka that we find pH from H. P is a function that means negative base 10 log of. Okay. whatever follows it. <coughs> okay, so adding more and more, here we're adding uh, 10, 12 and a half, 15, and 20 mils of sodium hydroxide, same process. Okay, we have a buffer going on. And so you take the amount of sodium hydroxide in terms of moles that are added, and you react it in your mind, on your paper, completely with the acid, and then you can use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation to find the pH. And so we could, we could calculate all those things, but we don't really need to. What do you notice about 12.5? What is the pH equal? It equals the, the pH is equal to the pKa because at this point the moles of acid and moles of base, conjugate base, are equal. And this is what's called the half equivalence point. We calculated earlier that it was going to take 25 milliliters of sodium hydroxide to get to the equivalence point. Twelve and a half is the halfway point. Okay. What about at the equivalence point? We've now added a stoichiometric amount of hydroxide ion that is reacting with the weak acid. So we're going to assume that this reacts completely and forms this much of the weak base. This isn't a buffer anymore, right? We do not have significant quantities of the weak acid and the conjugate base. Now it's acting uh, we treat it as an ion acting as a weak base. Because this guy's all gone, this is the conjugate base of a weak acid. It is a weak base. So how did we find the pH of this then? Hmm. We have 0 0.00250 moles of CHO2 minus. 
Yes. Um, so I'm going to make, I'm going to put a new, uh, just blank here. Because there's nowhere to write on that one. So we had CH2, CH2O minus, was that what it was? I don't know. Okay, I don't want to call it that. I'm just going to call it A minus. This is the weak base, and that's going to um, react with water to form the acid and hydroxide ion. Yes? And so, what will KB equal? What's the relationship between KB and KA? Anywhere. They add up to 14, right? So KB equals 14 minus, I'm sorry, PKA. Yeah, PKB equals 14 minus PKA. Sorry, that was confusing. So that was 3.74. So we've got 14 minus 3.74, um, 10.3, no, 10.26. <coughs> and now we know that we've got 0, 0.0, how many zeros was it? Two zeros? Is that right? moles of the A minus. And we've got, okay, try again. Oh my goodness. Let's, I'm just going to try to do this a little better. We need A minus, and we've got HA, and we've got hydroxide. And so over here we've got 0, 0.00 Two five zero moles, and this is initially zero and zero. So I took that table, the stoichiometry table that we had on the previous slide, and I flipped the equation around. And we're looking now at the base ionization. We're treating this as a weak base. So this is going to have a change of minus x plus x plus x, and at equilibrium we're going to get 0 0.0025 minus x, x and x. And so Kb, which is 10 to the minus 10.26, will equal x squared over this mess. You think the x is small approximation will work here? Yeah, yeah. cuz this this dissociation constant here is really small, right? So we'll we'll do it that way and then we'll check it. So we're going to have the square root of we do it however it makes sense to you. The square root of 10 to the power of -10.2x times Oh, I should know. Times 0 0.0025. And I'm coming up with x equals 3.71 times 10 to the minus 7. So, does that qualify as x being small? Yeah. We have to compare it to what we're subtracting it from. Yeah, it's small. So, now we kind of have to step back and say, what were we trying to calculate again? Anybody remember? No. What, what are we trying to calculate? PH. The pH. pH. What did we just find? OH. We found OH. Is this the concentration? Concentration. It's no. the moles. Oh. It's the moles. Uh. This is the moles of OH. What's the volume? 50 milliliters. So the concentration of the OH minus the hydroxide is going to be this number of moles divided by 50 milliliters. 
So I'm going to take, I still have that number in my calculator, divide by 0 0.05. And I'm just, you know, writing way too big today. I'm getting 7.4 times 10 to the minus 6. Well, 7.41 times 10 to the minus 6 molar is my sodium hydroxide concentration. Now, we need to get that to pH. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the negative log of that and get the pOH, pOH is going to be 5.13, and then I'm going to subtract that from 14 and get a pH of 8.87. Yay! Feeble cheer from the left side of the room. Did I get the right answer? I think so. It's the one for the book, is it? So here, um, that's eight, eight something. You want to see that writing still? 8.87. What'd the book come up with? It came up with 8.23. Okay, so I screwed up here. There's a problem. Henderson Hasselbalch equation, you can use moles instead of molarity in the calculations. Why can't you do this in this calculation? Well, we, we always do concentrations in the ice table, but why? See this expression down here? No. X squared over something minus X. The volumes won't cancel out. Yeah, okay. okay. It was close, no? It was close. That would be personal credit. But close only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades. <laughs> and this is not neither. Okay, so... Erase all strokes. Whoosh, gone. Okay. I know, it's very sad. I'm more sad than you are. Okay, so let's try this again. So we had 0 0.00250 moles. We need to convert that to concentration. So that ends up being 0 0.0500 moles per liter. Is that right, book people? This is 0, this is 0. We've got the minus x, the plus x, the plus x. Um, this is Kb, which, you know, through our circums our long figuring out, we, we figured out it was that, and that's going to equal x squared over 0 0.05 minus x. We're going to do that whole x squared. It, uh, x is small thing. I have a question. You have a question. Go ahead. Kb is 5.6 times 10 to the minus 11. Yes, their Kb is 5.6 times 10 to the negative 11. So minus 10 to the negative 10.11. Two six, which is five point four nine five times ten to the minus eleven. Perfect. <laughs> okay. Two numbers equal the same. So that's times 0 0.05, and then I need the square root of that. And I'm coming up with x equals one point six uh, six times ten to the negative sixth which is equal to the hydroxide ion concentration. They came up with 1.6, didn't they? 1.7. 1. 1.7. 7. 1. 7. Oh, perfect. Okay, good. Because this, yeah, that rounds to 1.7. So then I'm going to take the negative log of that. I'm going to get a pOH of 5.78 and... I'm going to subtract that from 14, and I'm going to get a pH equal to 8.22.
which is very close to what they had of 8.23. I, uh, I probably got that because I was carrying numbers through in my calculator instead of rounding them even uh, as I went along. But it's only different in the last sig fig. Phew. So I just gave you an example of how you can so easily go astray. Didn't mean to do that. Any questions? I'll take that as a no. Um, I already did that. Well, I did not already do that. Um, so just trying to catch up on some things I may have missed. Um, the equivalence point for the titration of a weak acid is always basic. When we titrated a strong acid with a strong base, the equivalence point pH was 7. It was neutral. When you're titrating a weak acid, you end up with a basic pH above 7 at the equivalence point. Yeah. And see, if I looked ahead in my slides, you know, there, I've got, got this all figured out. And that's where I was supposed to do the calculation. And it probably would have come out so much nicer there. <laughs> what about adding excess sodium hydroxide? Well, now at this point, the strong base is going to overwhelm the weak base, and the calculation will be the same for the strong as we, when we did the strong acid. So here's our initial uh, number of moles of weak acid. Here's the addition of the moles of sodium hydroxide. That's going to push this all the way over here, and we're going to have 0 .005 moles of sodium hydroxide left. So we're just going to calculate the pH based on that. The weak base is weak, and it, it can't really do anything about this. So how would that look? Well, this is, let me just check and make sure. No, I don't have a cheater slide on the next one. Um, the hydroxide, yeah, the hydroxide ion concentration is going to equal this 0 0.00050 moles divided by what's the total volume now? Volume. It's 30 plus 25, right? So 55 milliliters or 0 0.055 liters. So the concentration is 9.5. 0 0.09 times 10 to the minus third. <coughs> um, I prefer going through pOH because I think it's easier. So um, the negative log of 9.09 .09 times 10 to the minus third pOH is 2.04. That means the pH. is um, 11.96. And that does look like I got that one right. Questions? Same thing when you continue to add more and more sodium hydroxide. You're just treating it as a strong base now. The strong base has neutralized all the acid, and you're just looking at how much hydroxide is left. And so the calculations are fairly simple. And so you get this um, little curve up here. So the overall pH curve is going to look like this for weak acid with strong base. After you've added some sodium hydroxide, you're in a buffer region. And then at the equivalence point, um, we treat this as a weak conjugate base, and then when we get past that, we're looking at hydroxide in excess. Okay, so those were all the nasty calculations. Let's just do one. A 40 mil sample of 0.1 nitrous acid is titrated with 0.2 molar KOH. Calculate the pH at the equivalence point. 
Well, what's happening at the equivalence point? So quiet. We have an equal amount of sodium hydro uh, potassium hydroxide, equal amount of potassium hydroxide moles to the number of moles of the nitric acid, right? So we've got HNO2 plus KOH gives us um, H2O plus KNO2. How many moles of nitric acid do we have? We've got 40 milliliters, right, which is 0.04 liters times 0.1 moles per liter, 0 0.00400 moles of that. Yes? Yes. And then we are adding, we're adding nothing there, but we're going to add an equivalent number of moles of KOH. And those are going to react. And so this is going to be 0, and this is going to be 0. And over here, the nitrite is going to be 0 0.00400 moles. We're not looking at an equilibrium here. We're saying we had this am amount of acid, and we added this amount of strong base. Those are going to react. These are equal because it's at the equivalence point. And so they're going to form 0 0.00400 moles of this, which is K plus and NO2 minus. This is our weak base, our conjugate base of the acid. OK? This is the same acid we dealt with in the previous example, right? Yeah? So what we're going to do is we're going to treat this solution as the solution of a weak base. We got NO2 minus, and that's going to go to HNO2 plus yeah, plus OH. We need to use concentrations here. How much of that potassium hydroxide did we add? It doesn't tell us. Well, if we added that many moles, and we know the concentration, 0 0.200 moles per liter, Then we added 0 0.02 liters, which is 20 milliliters. I'm playing fast and loose with the uh, sig figs there. Everybody okay with that? We, why do we need to know how much volume of base was added? The tricky thing about a titration is the volume of the solution is always changing because you keep adding more junk. We need to know how much was added here so that we can find, so we can take this and find the molarity and not just use the moles. So we started out with 40 milliliters of our original acid. We've added 20 milliliters of the base. And so to find this concentration, we need to divide by the 60 milliliters, 0 0.06. No, that is one too many. 0 0.004 divided by 0 0.06. Bless you. So this is 6.67 times 10 to the minus 2 molar, or 0 0.0667. Molar. 
Everybody okay with that? So that's the concentration, the initial concentration for my weak base here. We're calling this zero and this zero, and then we're going to do that ice table thing. And so KB, um, the one I'm remembering is 10 to the minus 10.26, is going to be x squared divided by 0 0.00, sorry, 0 0.667 minus x. So then solving for x, I'm getting 1.91 times 10 to the minus 6. Anybody else get that? Yes, I'm hoping that someone is following along with their calculator. Awesome. One person. Okay. What were we trying to find again? The pH. What did I just find? I found X. X, though, is the concentration of hydroxide ion, right? So we can get the pH from that. pH ends up being 5.72. I'm going to subtract that from 14. I'm going to get a pH of 8.28. Does that seem reasonable? Yeah. Yeah. What, what are we expecting the pH to be? We're titrating a weak acid with a strong base. We're expecting it to be basic higher than 7. It ended up being higher than 7. Does that mean it's correct? Absolutely. Um, no. But it means we didn't screw up completely. Any questions? I looked at this chapter and I'm like, oh my goodness. It's just so much. It's just so much. Well, what if you flip it around and you titrate a weak base with a strong acid? Same thing, but basically in reverse. Calculations, really, really similar. Just basically flip the Ks, Kb and Ka, flip the acids and the bases. And what we see with the curve is that it starts out basic and goes acidic after the equivalence point. And here, the equivalence point is going to be less than 7, and so that is also opposite. Now, when, remember, though, when you're calculating the pH in the buffer region, the buffer region is still the first part, the part before the equivalence point. The buffer region uses pKa. It doesn't use pKb. It's still the pKa. What about a polyprotic acid? Remember, polyprotic acids have two or three ionizable hydrogens. So the example that's given here is sulfurous acid being titrated with sodium hydroxide. For sulfurous acid, um, we have one hydrogen ion coming off that has a Ka of about 10 to the minus 2, and the second one coming off is 10 to the minus 8. There is a significant difference between Ka1 and Ka2. When we have a large difference like this, what we'll, act, what we'll see in the, um, in the curve is we will see the two equivalence points. And an important thing to notice here is that the volume needed to reach the first equivalence point is equal to the volume needed to reach the second equivalence point, which should make sense, right? Because we have two hydrogen ions in each molecule of this acid. 
The first reaction reacts with one of them. The second uh, equivalence point is where we're reacting the second one. So it should take twice as much to get to the second as it did to the first. Does that make sense? Indicators. So far we've been talking about titrations where we're monitoring the pH of the pH meter, right? But they can also be monitored with a pH indicator. And an indicator um, allows us to just use a color change to find the equivalence point. So there is a subtle difference between the term end point and equivalence point. An end point is where the indicator changes color. The equivalence point is where you've added an amount of base equivalent to the amount of acid. If you have the correct indicator, the equivalence point and the end point will be at the same place. If you use the wrong indicator, they could be different. So here's an example of, I don't know what they're titrating here, but they're titrating an acid. Um, is this a weak acid they're titrating or a strong acid? Weak acid. How can you tell? Uh, the equivalent, equivalence point pH is over 7. And so this is a weak acid being titrated probably with a strong base. What we see here, this is a phenolphthalein indicator. As we add more and more, the pH creeps up. And then the pH jumps sharply near the equivalence point, And then we see a change in color of the indicator. And that alerts us that, hey, you're at the end. Um, indicators are actually weak organic acids that change color depending on the pH. So the weak acid and the conjugate base are different colors from each other, and that makes them very useful. These have very intense colors, so we only need a little bit of the indicator to cause a visible color. And that's important because there's so, so little of it that it's not going to mess up the pH of the solution or um, interact at all with the actual titration reaction, and so that's good. This is uh, phenolphthalein, which is probably the most common indicator used in general chemistry labs. Here's the structure of the acidic form, and here's the basic form. This has got an intense pink color, and the acidic form is clear. And so here we see um, some test tubes showing phenolphthalein in a, at pH 2, 4, 6, 7, 8, no, that's a 5. 2, 4, 5, 7, 9, and 10. And we see at, at pH 9, we're seeing a change in color. And then at 10, we see that lovely magenta color that tells us we overshot our endpoint. So there was some derivation stuff here that I didn't feel was super important. So this is the bottom line for the indicator business. Um, we can predict the color of the indicator based on um, the relationship between the pH of the solution and the pKa of the indicator. When the pH is equal to the pKa of the indicator, then we know that the uh, base and acid forms are equal in concentration, and that's where we get the intermediate color, whatever it is for that particular indicator. If the pH um, is one pH unit higher, more basic, than the pKa, then we have more of the base form, the conjugate base form, less of the acid form, and then we're going to get the color of the base form of the indicator. If the pH is less than the pKa, then we get the color of the acidic form. And so what this comes down to, basically, is that the indicators change color within a range of two pH units that are centered on the pKa for that indicator. Or indicators are weak organic acids. They each have their own pKa. And so we see in these colors here, this is methyl red. Um, here we've got 2 and 4 are similar in color. 5, we're seeing a change. And here's 7, 9, and 10. So the base form of this is yellow. The acidic form is kind of a purplish color. And right here, this would be the intermediate color. And that's what we're looking for as an endpoint.
Here's a nice chart. It gives a bunch of different acid base indicators and shows the colors and the pHs over which they change color. A chart like this can be really useful. Sometimes um, you get somebody who's colorblind and has a really hard time seeing the clear to pale pink transition. There are other, other indicators that can be substituted that might be easier to see.